Welcome to the Abyss. I'm Jacqueline, and today we're discussing coral reefs. Let's dive in. Coral reefs are often described as the rainforest of the sea. This is due to both ecosystems being rich, productive, and incredibly diverse. However, at the phyla level of classification, coral reefs are the most diverse ecosystem on the planet, with 32 of the 34 animal phyla being represented. This diversity includes an estimated third of all marine fish species and a total species estimate of 600,000 to 9 million. This diversity is a remarkable feat considering coral reefs only make up approximately 0.05 to 0.1% of the ocean floor. Their small global cover can be seen when looking at the worldwide distribution of coral reefs. This limited area is due to their specific physical requirements. Coral reefs require tropical waters and a temperature range between 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. They are also limited by light and salinity, so are found in shallow waters away from river mouths. This again makes their diversity impressive because this is an area of the ocean that is not typically very productive. Of course, one of the most defining features of coral reefs are the corals themselves. Corals are animals in the phyla nadarian, which also includes the jellyfish and the anemones. Within this phyla is the class anthozoan, which is the corals. The adult stage of anthozoans is a polyp, which are soft-bodied sessile organisms attached to the seabed. Within the anthozoans, there are many different types of corals that are found all over the world's oceans, not just on reefs. The reef-building corals make up the order Scleractinia in the subclass Hexacoralia. They are commonly referred to as the stony corals. This is because the polyps secrete a calcium carbonate skeleton, which protects their soft body. While many Scleractinian species are solitary, many more are colonial, meaning that many genetically identical polyps are all connected together and act as one individual. So when you think of the large corals that dominate reefs, such as the brainy corals or large branching corals, these are actually many identical individuals that act as one. These scleractinian corals are also the reef-building corals. They precipitate calcium carbonate from the surrounding waters and secrete it as a skeleton. Later, this forms the substrate on which the reef sits. When the corals die, their skeletons are eroded into sand, which settles into cracks and crevices on the reef. This sand is then cemented by other animals into a hard limestone rock. This process is referred to as reef cementation. Over time, the reef grows larger and builds upwards, allowing it to stay in the shallow water that many of its species require. This is one way that coral reefs are a unique ecosystem because the substrate is biogenically created. This process also creates a complex ecosystem that results in a variety of habitats and a larger diversity of species. One of the main reasons why coral reefs are so productive and diverse and yet so environmentally sensitive is because of a symbiotic relationship between the corals and a single-celled algae called zooxanthellae. A symbiotic relationship is when two species are dependent upon each other for survival. Since corals are animals, they are heterotrophic and require food from external sources. In the case of corals, they are predators that use their stinging nematocysts to filter feed on zooplankton. However, reef-building corals live in tropical waters where there is not enough nutrients and food in the water for the corals to survive. This is where their symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae come in. The zooxanthellae live in the endodermis or inner skin cells of the corals. Zooxanthellae are photosynthetic and can therefore make their own food using energy from the sun. This allows nutrients to be obtained in low nutrient waters. Zooxanthellae are so good at this that they can photosynthesize 10 to 100 more times organic matter than they need for their own metabolic and growth needs. They then provide the corals with the excess food allowing the corals to thrive and provide more energy to the ecosystem overall. Since this is a symbiotic relationship, the zooxanthellae also benefit. The corals produce waste carbon dioxide and ammonia as part of their respiratory and metabolic processes, both of which the algae require. 
The corals also protect the zooxanthellae from grazers and provide them with a habitat close to the sunlight where they can photosynthesize. This relationship is part of why reefs are able to teem with life while the surrounding waters are comparatively barren. In conclusion, corals are a rich, dynamic, and complex ecosystem, in part due to how the ecosystem is formed and where the energy is derived. That's it for today's video, but it's just the tip of the reef when it comes to corals. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments down below. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, I will see you later.